Hello and welcome back once again. Today we're going to talk about client server in the cloud and we're going to talk about a capability that you might want to use in your home lab. So client server in the cloud. Current desktop operating systems are being made irrelevant by software as a service in the cloud. Back in the 80s and 90s, there were many more applications that ran directly on desktops. Today, it's not unusual to see the web browser running all of the applications at a company. Even Office 365 and now Windows 365 are cloud-based examples of SaaS. Modern web browsers turn desktop computers into lightweight client operating systems. A good example of that would be Chrome OS. And cloud-based applications are easier to maintain because they're installed and maintained on a server and not on the desktop. So how did the cloud come about? Well, in the 80s and 90s, many applications were what we call client-server applications. Applications ran at the desktop and they used something like SQLNet to connect to a database which was hosted on the server. And Unix and Linux systems have had the X Windows X11 windowing system at its core since 1987. X Windows was the basic framework behind those GUI environments allowing interaction with the mouse, keyboard, display, or even a touchscreen. So Windows and Mac OS are different than Linux. When Windows and Mac were designed with a GUI, the network was basically ignored. Windows uses the Desktop Window Manager, DWM, which handles window frames, animations, and its display. Mac OS uses a display manager called the Quartz Compositor. Windows uses File Explorer as the Window Manager, and Mac OS's File Manager is Finder. Linux has choices for its window manager. Um, another one called DWM, not to be confused with Windows DWN, KWIN, and Pantheon, and there are several others. Linux has choices for its display manager, KDM, GDM, SDDM, and LightDM. And Linux has choices for its file manager, Nautilus, Thunar, PC Man FM, Dolphin, Nemo, and there are several others. So Linux is different. Dis the Display Manager in Linux is responsible for actually logging in, starting the display server, and loading the desktop. Ubuntu uses the GNOME Display Manager, and yes, it really is pronounced GNOME, otherwise known as GDM. The Linux window manager shows the different programs displayed on the graphical user interface. Ubuntu uses GNOME as its window manager also. I mention Ubuntu a lot in my presentation simply because Ubuntu is a very large install base and it's the most natural Linux to move to from Windows and it also makes a really nice server variant that's easy for self-hosting. The default file manager in Ubuntu is Nautilus. And I use the Nemo file manager in Ubuntu. And I use Cinnamon as my desktop display manager, which is a GNOME variant. And, and that's something to take away here. You can load a Linux and then you can customize it to look any way that you want and behave any way you want. So you don't really have to, to hop distros, so to speak, in order to accomplish that. So X Windows is awesome. On Linux, graphical X Windows is pre-installed. It's an integral part of the operating system. X Windows lets you run an application on a remote system and control and display the application on your own desktop, even though you don't have that application loaded on your desktop. And they, as an example, you don't have GIMP, which is an open source Photoshop installed on your particular system. But you run GIMP by launching it on another computer, but having it display back and run on your computer. So what about Windows and Mac OS? In X Windows, 
The server is the system displaying the application and the client is the system that the application is being executed from. Xming is an X Windows server for Microsoft Windows. And Mac OS has an X Windows server app that you can load called X Quartz. So how does this help me? In a self-hosted home lab, it's valuable to be able to easily run applications on other systems. Most commonly, SSH is used to connect to a remote system and administer it. Did you know that SSH can be used to run GUI applications using X Windows? SSH can forward the display from a remote system using X11 forwarding. So how do you do this? Well, we install XAuth on the remote server. That's the command to install XAuth. You connect your SSH session to a server with the X11 forwarding option enabled. And then you issue a command, for example, SSH capital X, the address of the remote system with the application. And then as an example, OpenShot QT, that would be the application we want to run. Another example to run SM player. So not all applications can run via X11. Okay, we're going to try out SSH and see how it works with the Remote X display. If we click on the Show Applications and we type in OpenShot, you can see that OpenShot is not installed on the system. Likewise, if we type in SM Player, which is a video player, we'll also notice that it sits here saying Searching and does not find SM Player. So, We'll bring up a terminal and we will do an SSH to the remote system with a capital X dash X and then my remote system address is 172.16.1.225 and this system has OpenShot installed on it. So I'm going to say OpenShot dash QT which is actually the full name of the executable application and I type in my password for the SSH, goes over to the remote system, and there is OpenShot. And you can see at the title bar on the end, parenthetically, it says running on Mondo. Mondo is the name of the remote system. So I can quit OpenShot. I can do the same thing with SM Player. Run SM Player. Again, provide my password for the remote SSH. SM Player comes up and runs parenthetically. It tells me that it's running on Mondo. Um, I can move this thing around, but it is on this desktop. It is not on the remote desktop. It is on this particular local system. We quit this, comes back to the dollar sign prompt, and there is an example of how you can leverage X Windows with SSH to use the power and applications installed on a remote system to display those applications on a local system. In summary, most applications have migrated to being web-based and are called cloud services or software as a service, SaaS for short. Desktop operating systems are becoming more irrelevant since applications are being run via the web. Examples are web-based email, Nextcloud, Office 365, Windows 365, and many others. Cloud-based applications like the Amazon Echo allow compute power to be based remotely so that smart speakers can be inexpensive and underpowered. Client-server applications predated the cloud, and X-Windows is one example of that. 
All right. So thank you very much for listening today and please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.